So now, um, you know, what we need to do now is, of course, fix it. So what we need to do is, whatever controls this DE pin here, we just need it to wait a little bit longer for whatever amount of time that is. So it's approximately 30 microseconds. We need it to wait a little bit longer and then uh, and then pull the, the driver enable pin down and then it will work. So that's what we need to do. So how do we do that? So I mentioned before that in order to fix this we need to have a basic knowledge of how this works. And I'll tell you something, I don't know exactly how Modbus works. I've got no idea really. I know the basics. So in order to get this to work we need to know the basics. So if I just go down here um, there's a lot of stuff here about saying how it works and essentially the way it works is Modbus is just a communication protocol and you send data in a certain way and you can uh, interact with different pieces of hardware. And I'm going to show you the function code for read input register because that's a very common one. So you get a device and you're going to send it or send a request using function code 4 which means I want to read something from you. And basically you have to um, create a packet like we just saw a minute ago with the um, with the analyzer. You have to create a packet with like the ID and then the function code and then you know data like that. So we're going to start making that but I'm going to skip over now to um, to function code 4 so it should be down here somewhere. So it says the function code is one byte and it needs to be four. Then it says it wants the starting address which is two bytes. It wants the quantity of input registers which is two bytes and uh, and that's all. So that's the data required in order to send a request for read input registers. And there's like a header and a, pa and a, a footer that goes into that too. But you can see here that Essentially, there are five bytes in the thing called the PDU. I think there's an ADU and a PDU. The ADU is the whole thing, the whole message, and the PDU is the bit that goes into it to tell the device what you want. Anyway, I don't want to go on about that too much. Let's just get into it. Okay, so you know it's you know when you use a library in Arduino, it's fairly easy. You just use the library, and then you just put in the address and the function code and all that sort of stuff, and it's really simple. Well, we need to emulate that thing and make our own copy of that, but only very basic. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So to start with, we need control over the, um, the driver enable and the receiver enable pin. So I'm going to say define, uh, I don't know, Modbus, driver enable, receiver enable, pin, and um, sorry, I've just done that wrong there. Um, driver enable, receiver enable pin, and we'll keep that as 33. And then next, of course, we need the pin mode. So let's just go home there. So pin mode, uh, MD, driver enable, receiver enable. And that's going to be an output because we want, we want to be able to manipulate that pin, of course, and then set the driver enable high or low. So serial enable, so serial... Uh, begin 115200 just for the purpose of the test I mean you might have a different mod device those might be 9600 or whatever so we've done that there now of course the way the thing works is you've got that RS485 converter so TTL to RS485 RS485 to TTL converter and of course you're going to need that in between because um, Modbus devices don't understand uh, serial or TTL or whatever you want to call it they understand uh, Modbus and RS485. So you need the converter to be able to convert from the two different protocols. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk serial to the converter and the converter is going to convert that into the language that Modbus devices understand. So the pins that we're going to use are TX and RX um, on the on the SP32. Anyway, I don't need to go into too much depth about that. So what we want to do to start with is we want to do a digital write. So let's get rid of this. Digital write. Digital write. M D D E R E and high. We want to write high. So um so why do we want to write high to uh, to that pin? 
Well, we want to write hi to the uh, to the pin, the driver enable pin, because we want to enable the driver. We want to say something, okay? We want to say something to the device or to the logic analyzer or whatever. So now we've got to emulate the uh, packet, if you like, a packet that gets sent to the Modbus device. So to emulate it, we need to give, we, well, basically we need to look at that documentation and uh, make a packet that resembles uh, what we need. And essentially that consists of, or in my case, it consists of an ID. So the ID of the device you want to talk to, then uh, it's a function code. So we need the function code. So ID of the device you want to talk to, function code so like I said number four is to read the input registers then it said that you need a starting address so starting address and that's starting address number one because it said in the documentation that there are two uh, two bytes for the address so we've got one and two then the quantity of the input registers you want to read so um, quantity to read and that's number byte number one because again there's two bytes oops two bytes for that according to the documentation and then there's actually two more as well there's the crc so cyclic redundancy check uh, and again there's there are two bytes so crc number two okay and then after we've done the transmission we want to write low to the driver enable pin so that we can then uh, listen for a response of course because if the driver enable is low, is high and um, you know if if you've enabled the driver then you can't you can't receive you can't listen so you need to enable it say what you want to say disable it and that way you can read so so far so good um, now there's another thing we need to do as well when we've transmitted all these things, we need to flush. And flush means um, if you haven't already sent out all of the data, then send it out now. In other words, force it to be sent out before uh, the program continues. So serial.flush. Send everything out if you've not already done so. Okay. So what do we need to do next? So, you know, when you're using the library, you'll have to send it uh, some data, like you'll send it the function code and the address and all this sort of stuff. Well, in here, you actually have to send it that, but in a more raw form. Anyway, uh, let's get started and I'll, I'll try and explain. Well, this could be quite difficult. So serial.write. So let's say we want to send it to device one. So it's simply one. And that's fine. So the next thing it needs is the function code. So at this point in time, it knows the address of the thing which it's supposed to be uh, for, which this um, request is for. So next we need the function code, and this is also one byte. So serial.write, and then it wants the function code. And function code is one byte, so function code for, which means uh, read the input registers. So now the next bit is, okay, well, which input registers do you want to read? And because there could be quite a lot of input registers, um, it needs two bytes in order to send the address. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated. So you'll have to research how to work this out. I don't want to go into detail with it. Essentially, um, you need to, to find that out. So it comes in two parts, a most significant byte, which represents certain numbers, and a least significant byte, which represents uh, the smaller numbers. So here, this is MSB most significant byte and here this is LSB mo uh, least significant byte and in my case um, I want to start from a certain number and it's represented by most significant byte 49 now I'm sorry that I'm, I'm kind of glossing over this um, but I suppose that info is for another video so for me uh, 49 um, that that byte will represent when um, when combined with this one, it will represent the address that I want. So, starting address. And then over here, the quantity of input registers. The quantity of input registers to read. And this is probably going to be quite an easy one. Again, we've got most significant byte, most significant byte, and least significant byte. And here, this, this will be easy. So, let's just 
zero those out for the time being. So how many uh, registers, uh, no, how many cells, if you like, or input registers do you want to read? So because this is the least significant byte, it makes it fairly easy for us to understand. So if you want to read one, this would simply be one, because it's decimal, but then it gets converted into bytes. So if you want to read six, like I do, you simply write six. If you want to read, um, you know, something more than 256, then this one will get changed as well. But like I said, it, it gets quite heavy, so let's leave it at that. And then the cyclic redundancy check. Again, this is in the documentation, but in a different stage. And you have to work this out and then create these two bytes, which correspond to the, the cyclic redundancy check, which, which it should have. So for me, this is 126 and 244. And when both those are combined, um, this represents the redundancy check for all the data within the packet. And essentially, that is enough to uh, to mimic the libraries that we would use them for Arduino. There's one more thing I need to do, of course, and that's probably delay, and otherwise it'll just send this at a crazy rate. So we want to repeat this every second. So I'll upload, and and hopefully. It will work perfectly. Just hold the key button down. There we go, and it's starting to write. So we're at that analyzer, and we've made our, uh, well, you can't really call it a library, but our equivalent of the library. So let's just see if it's worked. Oh, it looks like it has worked. So we'll zoom out, and let's see what it's saying. So it's saying read input registers. And here are the pieces of data here that are being sent every second. So it's looking good so far. Now we don't want to actually fix the problem at this stage. We just want to replicate it or make an equivalent. So now uh, we can actually try and fix it because now we understand the problem. So let's see, byte 1, byte 2, byte 3, byte 4, byte 5, byte 6, byte 7, and halfway through byte 7, it is decided to drop the... Um, driver enable pin and byte 8 has been cut off well now we can now we have power over the thing we want to extend the time which this is high for so this is the driver enable pin so if we just go over here again uh, which one is it this a uh, modbus test 2 so the problem is you see this low here this is set low too fast so if we put a delay in there so in other words send all that delay for a bit and then set it low that should technically uh, fix the problem. So the most appropriate delay seems to be about 120 uh, microseconds. We'll sample it again, and I think it'll work now. Right, so it's saying read coils, read, read coils, read coils, and you can see down here that it's detected something. So, right, the first one, you can see it's perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bytes, and the timing is perfect. And because the timing is perfect, the checksum and everything is perfect also. So that's good. And then we go over here, and let's say an invalid checksum. So let's have a look again. <coughs> Why is it invalid checksum? Because sometimes it adds this zero byte at the end of it. And um, there's a way to, to eliminate that. Uh, and I'll show you now. Alright, so this problem, um, well we fixed the timing uh, issue of the problem, but what happens is that it sometimes like, spikes up and it thinks there's another byte coming and then it ends up giving it a zero byte. And it's something to do with the uh, Max 485 chip. But anyway, you know, the problem doesn't matter too much, I suppose we want the solution. And the solution is that you're supposed to terminate these lines properly. And to terminate this one, you can go from uh, A straight to 5 volts but using a 680 ohm resistor so if I go from ground to A just like that uh, it should fix the problem so just to summarize um, the problem with the ESP32 and Modbus is that the ESP32 is too fast um, I don't know if it's because it's like multiple core or whatever but it basically lowers the driver enable pin way before uh, the serial transmission is completed so it's not synchronized and I don't know exactly why that happens but it does 
So what I found is instead of using libraries, I'd write my own thing which forces uh, the the device to write the exact bytes that I want exactly when I want them to be written and I'm controlling the driver enable pin directly so I wait for it I'll do serial flush to be sure that it's gone then I'll wait a couple of milliseconds and then I'll control the uh, driver enable pin myself so yeah um, hopefully this video is useful it's certainly very rare as far as I know uh, this is the first time this fix has actually been published on YouTube and, and on Google. Um, there was a web, there was a forum which I written on uh, in May when I when I initially found the, the problem for this. Anyway, um, I hope this video is useful. And as usual, thanks for watching. Bye.